We are in Northwest Arkansas on a glorious date. If you couldn't tell, we're at the home of the Arkansas Razorbacks as plenty of Hawk fans making their way into Reynolds Razorback Stadium to watch what should be a good look, an early look at the 2023 Arkansas football team. Coach Sam Pittman trying to get this team back on the tracks after what was considered by many a disappointing seven and six campaign. He decided to shake things up, bring in some new quarter coordinators, including Dan Enos, who will run the offense. He makes a return here to Fayetteville. And it's always nice when you see old number one running out on the grass. KJ Jefferson back to lead this offense a lot for the fans to see today. Should be about 100 plays in this scrimmage and a lot of fun coming up. I'm Dave Neal alongside former Georgia quarterback Aaron Murray. Glad you could join us today. And, and Aaron, obviously last year I think was a disappointment in terms of expectations for what people had for this Arkansas team. So how important is this spring in terms of looking ahead? Well, I think the biggest thing you hit on it is the new coordinators. It's new. It's a new system on both sides. You go to pro style on the offense. Defensively, you get rid of that three down, more of a four down front. So you have the new coordinators. You have 22 new players, 12 freshmen, 10 kids to the portal. So they need reps. You need film. you got to make those corrections now so that when fall can't start, you're ready to go hit the ground running. So it's a big 15 days. And it's a big day today to watch how far they progress since day one. Well, obviously, there's a lot of moving parts, but a couple of constants, and they're really good constants, and that is your quarterback and your running back, K.J. Jefferson and Rocket Sanders. Almost 500 pounds in the backfield, and this offense is still going to want to run the ball first with these two guys, but K.J.'s development in this pro-style offense, getting under center some more, they're not sure how much they want to run him this year. They want to see him develop as a passer, and when he has the time in the pocket, he can throw it with the best of them in this league, and then Rocket Sanders, 237 pounds. He's great between the tackles, but has the speed when he does get on the edge. So you feel great about them. They've been some shuffling with the offensive line. You get those five guys ready to go with that size in the backfield. Going to be, once again, one of the premier offenses in this league. Well, we'll see a lot of K.J. Jefferson today. Reps are important with the new coordinator, and he'll have plenty of them today. A lot to watch for the Arkansas faithful. We'll hear from their head coach and what he's looking for today when we come back to Fayetteville, Arkansas. This is how legends are made. Chevy Silverado, a new Silverado HD. Choose your own path with the number one best-selling retail full-size pickup and see where it takes you. Find new roads. It's Chevy truck season. Get 0% financing plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2023 Silverado 1500 pickups or get 2250 total cash allowance on a 2023 Silverado with a turbo high output engine. See your super Chevy dealers today. This is how legends are made. Chevy Silverado, a new Silverado HD. Choose your own path with the number one best-selling retail full-size pickup and see where it takes you. Find new roads. It's Chevy truck season. Get 0% financing plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2023 Silverado 1500 pickups or get 2250 total cash allowance on a 2023 Silverado with a turbo high output engine. See your super Chevy dealers today. And welcome back to Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium here in Fayetteville. Gorgeous day getting set for this red and white game, or I should say scrimmage as it's about to unfold before our eyes. And the man that's in charge of this whole operation joining us now, Coach Sam Pittman down on the field. Coach, thanks for joining us. And obviously a lot of excitement when you get some new coordinators. you got a bunch of transfers, some young guys. Uh, what's it been like the last few weeks gathering the group together and, and what have you seen from your guys that really impressed you? Well, I don't know. I'm sure it could have gone better. I don't know how much better. i um, been really excited about our new hires. Obviously, uh, you know, they had big shoes to fill, and Coach Odom and Coach Browse, both of them excellent coordinators. But uh, very, very happy with where we are. This I like the culture of the team. Uh, I'm very happy, very pleased with the two guys that we hired. So you know i got to go to the quarterback first, Coach, and I'm super excited to see KJ. Always excited to see him when he's out there. His development in this new system with Enos, what have you seen from him over the 14 days, and what can we expect this afternoon? Well, I think he's really helped him. You know, um, Coach is a little bit more of a pro-style offense, and, and uh, I think it's going to help KJ in the future. I think it's going to help us now. But a lot of individual, a lot of, 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 of uh, individual work, technique work. And I think he's taken to it, and I think he's doing a really good job with it. And I've, you'll have to ask him, but I think him and Dan have a really good relationship. 
you know, obviously this will be a different looking offense, and as we will see it here unfold before yeah. our eyes. About, but what will it? I mean, how how different will it be from what we saw the last couple of years with Coach Bryles running the show? I just think uh, formationally, uh, personnel. You know, we're we're trying to get a little bit heavier with tight ends. You know, we'll be in more uh, 12s, uh, possibly 13, maybe a little bit more 20 personnel, uh, more personnel driven. Uh, obviously, we're going to play a slower brand of football, so you, you know your quarterback's going to have to be into checks and things of that nature when we get to the line of scrimmage. But uh, for the most part, you know, I like to run the ball, I like to play action, and I like to go deep. So uh, that's that's uh, exactly what Dan likes, and uh, you know that's why I hired him. It's a dream come true for a quarterback coach. Uh, I want to talk about the physicality a little bit. What's yeah. it been like for spring this year, maybe different from last year, that gives you confidence as you head into the offseason? Well, we've tackled. We've been physical. Um, you know, we, we this will be our third tackling, live tackle of, of the spring. And I didn't do it last year. I made a mistake. Uh, you know, I think you can win positions better if everything's live. You know, let's look at it. If your quarterback's never live, you really don't know what you have until the season starts. Now, nobody's going to make the quarterback live. But if you don't tackle, you've kind of made everybody on your team non-live as well. Uh, we want to get away from that, and we're finding out more and more about our football team this spring, I feel. All right, last thing before we let you go. Where will your eyes be today? What are you going to be focused on? Just the physicality uh, of the line of scrimmage. You know, I, 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 I'm hoping I see out of our defensive line what I've seen uh, all spring. Uh, I'm hoping some of the movements that we've made up front on the offensive line can kind of build our confidence of where we're going to go in the fall. And I think that would be the biggest focus uh, there. And then we, we need some transfers in the secondary and transfers in uh, the wide receiver group to kind of uh, – kind of man up and uh, take ownership of those spots as well. All right, buddy. Thanks. Uh, always a pleasure. Thanks for having us, and uh, always great to see you. All right, guys. Good to see you all. Thank you for being here. You got it. Sam Pittman getting ready to watch his boys. One final practice here in the 2023 spring season. Now, you know, it was kind of a disappointment, 6-6 six and six regular season. But, hey, the bowl game, you want to talk about some excitement. The AutoZone Liberty Bowl in Memphis was an outstanding shootout, triple overtime game. And it was Arkansas's offense that really put on a show. K.J. Jefferson looked pretty healthy after taking some time off. But it was an exciting one that went down to the wire. And finally, at the end of the day, K.J. Jefferson just says, you know what, I'll do this myself as Arkansas would defeat Kansas 55-53. And I think that was a really important stepping stone for the guys that are back in this program. Just that little, you know, you can say what it is, but ending on a win certainly helps you. Well, also ending on a season where you're not, you have a, a winning record as well. You kind of look back and say, okay, we went seven and six. We won our bowl game. You said it finished the season off with a win instead of going six and seven. Because I was part of my freshman year, a team that went six and seven. And you kind of were always staying with, you had a losing season, so you never want that. So impressive game, and, and I think you had another good point, Dave. When KJ's healthy, that's the biggest thing for this team and this offense. Well, this will be, a, a, again, just to reiterate, we're not in a game situation. This is more of or less kind of one of their type of scrimmages that they would have during the spring season. They're going to try to run about 100 plays in that neighborhood. We're going to be some special teams kind of interwoven in this process. And we'll start it off with a kickoff, and now the offense will come out. The first team offense will work against the second team defense here. Um, and they'll flip flop that for a series of plays, 9 to 12 plays. And then later on in this scrimmage, you'll see good on good for a bunch of plays. But there is K.J. Jefferson, 6'3", 246. We talked about it last year, really got banged up, and midway through that season was never the same guy. He overcame those, played some games, but it played him in some pain. But when this guy is healthy, he's as good as they get. And you got to love first snap of the spring game, too, under center, something we did not really see at all last season from Arkansas. Really going to see his footwork today from five-step to three-step drops and play action as well. Yeah, KJ's really never taken snaps under center before. Drops it off quickly to the tight end, Nathan Bax. That's a group that they're really trying to emphasize with this new look offense under Dan Enos. Well, he's excited about the play action pass. I, mean, I was at practice yesterday watching him and watching his footwork specifically, and he came up to me and said, you know, I love the play action. I love being able to stretch out there, put the ball into the belly of my running back, pull it, get on the run or set up in the pocket. It's the three and five straight drop back that he's going to continue to work on this summer. Oh, yes, 
They'll hand it off to the middle of that line of scrimmage and nowhere to run there for Raheem Sanders, preseason All-American already on some lists. Courtney Snelling steps up from the free safety spot to finish off that play. But boy, you want to talk about some talent. 1,443 yards, 10 touchdowns. It is rare you get that much production running-wise back back-to-back -back seasons between your quarterback and running back. And they're deep at that position as well. They'll be able to rotate two or three. Bryce Stevens goes in motion. KJ Jefferson will take it himself. And they'll have him down. Of course, quarterbacks not to be tackled. See, that was always the frustrating part is when you're in the open field in this situation, especially a guy like KJ in practice, you can't tell me in a game situation right now. Great read. He feels the defensive end close. One on one, maybe the linebacker would have gone, but that DB is not tackling a 250 pound quarterback in space like that. So you, there's not going to be a lot of pure quarterback runs as many this season, but you are going to see those zone reads where if a defensive end does crash, he does a great job of reading it, pulling and getting north south. KJ rushed for 640 yards. He threw for 2,600, and this one's a little bit off the mark. He's trying to hit Tesla. And that's an area, the wide receiver group, Kurtz talked a little bit about it. They went out and got a couple of guys that transferred in. And Andrew Armstrong, Isaac Tesla, a couple of those guys that have really been impressive this spring. Well, they got great size. I think that's the, the one thing that really stands out is their, their physicality and something that they had to get used to jumping from where they were to oh, going against Arkansas's defense. But they got the size and they got the speed. It'll be second down. They'll hand it off to Sanders. And he'll be hit inside the 45 down to the 43-yard line. T.J. Metcalf, one of those early enrollees. Nope. The tackle. Going back to the receivers, Dave, that, that's one of the areas talking with Enos yesterday that they felt like took a massive stride after about two weeks. You know, they were thinking a lot, new terminology, working with a new quarterback, some of these transfer guys, and instead of just playing ball, then all of a sudden the kind of that, that light bulb flashed in their head and playing with some more speed and more tempo. Hand it off again to Sanders on third down at about three, and he'll get a yard. Those are some of the receivers that um, certainly need to step up, and we put Luke Has in there, the tight end, the freshman, who has garnered a lot of attention the last few weeks. Well, Coach Pittman hit it a little bit when we just had him on. You know, they, they want to be multiple offensively. They want to be, you know, there'll be 11 personnel, three receivers, a tight end, but there'll be 12 personnel. They'll bring a second tight end in. They feel like they have a couple guys that can stretch the field from that spot, and he's one of them. They'll throw it, coming near side. Tesla with the catch, and he'll be knocked out of bounds near the 31. So on fourth and two, they pick up the first down and move the football. Quincy McAdoo on the coverage. Oh, this is great. I mean, what you, in, in a real game, a defense is thinking with that that girth in the backfield that it's going to be a run play, get, put, get behind your shoulder pads and get the first down, but giving KJ the option to be able to, to roll to the left, not an easy throw, turn the hips, get the first down, but it's a three-way go. Running back, quarterback run, throw in the flat for the first. A.J. Green checks in at running back. They'll fake it to him, throw over the middle, and a big collision inside the 20 around the... 18-yard line, that's Isaac Tesla making another catch. Uh, it's a play they worked hard yesterday in practice, reading those linebackers. You see that linebacker hesitate at all. KJ's got the ability at that 6-3 frame to get the arm up and down. They actually put a net about seven yards in front of the quarterback. Play action pass, get the arm up and over, get the ball up to the receiver. By the way, that receiver was Bryce Stevens, not Tesla. Stevens 14, not four. There is Stevens in motion. Trying to set up a little middle screen to A.J. Green, and he couldn't hold on to the football as the defensive front collapsed. Eric Gregory kind of disrupting that play. Oh, he's want to be clean on the screen for a running back. Don't get grabbed in the line of scrimmage. Offensive lineman, you want to hold for a second, then shed and move on, but been a good drive so far. This is what you want to see, Dave. You know, one's going against twos. You're not really sure in an environment like this how fast or slow an offense is going to start, but been very, very clean. Second down and 10. A.J. Green stays in at running back. Three receivers split wide to the far side. 
They'll run it to the right side. A.J. Green gets the corner, and he's inside the 10 and flipped over around the six-yard line. That'll be good enough to move the chains. It'll be a first and goal situation for this first team offense. Well, that's a great job by Stevens, number 14. He's had a couple really big blocks on this drive, a nice catch as well in a skinny. But you saw right there, too high safety look. And, and, and for a quarterback, the big thing this season for KJ is they're going to be a little bit slower, which gives him options at the line of scrimmage to check into certain plays. Right there, too high safety, light box. Hey, running back, get in the pistol behind me. We're going to run the ball. Able to get the first down. Hand it off to A.J. Green, cuts it back and dives in for the touchdown from six yards out. So A.J. Green, the junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, had three touchdowns a year ago. Finds a little crease in that defense. He finished up the season with a 100-yard rushing game against Kansas in that Liberty Bowl on 13 carries. Boy, a nice combination of running backs with Sanders, Green, you got the Binion, and you hope to get Dominic Johnson back in the fall. He's been out with some injuries. So our first stoppage, we'll step aside back to Fayetteville after this. Well, getting ready for the second team offense to face the first team defense here in the Arkansas Red-white game, hard to call it a game. There's no clock, there's no score or a scrimmage. A good crowd on hand here at Reynolds Razorback Stadium. So they're doing some special teams work interwoven here amongst the offense. So we will see what will be the second team offense coming onto the field. First team offense. Just marched it down the field. Jefferson, three of five for 32 yards. A.J. Green with a couple of rushes for 17 yards. Sanders, three carries, eight yards on that opening possession. So now you get this first team defense. And here comes the newest addition to the quarterback room. Jacoby Criswell, the transfer from North Carolina, three years at UNC, but from right here in the Great state of Arkansas, 6'1", 224. Just couldn't find any time over there at North Carolina. Apparently, they have a pretty good quarterback over there. Yeah, North Carolina becoming QBU <laughs> yeah, all of a no sudden. Joke. <laughs> Hand off there goes to Rashad DeBinion. Jordan Crook bringing him down. Now, one thing Dan Enos did tell us is, is his excitement for the way that all these quarterbacks play the position. They're all extremely athletic. Don't really have to change the offense too much. They can all do the RPOs, the zone reads, get in space, move the pocket with them as well. That play was blown up by Torian Carter. There's Dan Enos down on the field calling the plays. Talked to him for a while yesterday about his expectations. Said really just wanted this spring scrimmage to be clean. He wants to eliminate penalties. Said they had some penalty issues throughout their scrimmages and just see guys really aggressive and, and show me you want to be there. Well, the, the, the penalties come from thinking. When you're thinking, not reacting, issues start to happen. So you expect 15 days into this thing now, 15 practices, to see a little bit more clean football on that side. Again, not a whole, whole lot of time for Criswell to do anything with the football. Landon Jackson came from the edge. Uh, they love their defensive ends. I mean, that's 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 what you have to love about this new off our defense. Excuse me. Now with four downs, they have depth. They got a transfer from Missouri, and Trajan Jeffcoat as well. So those two coming off the edge, really feel like they have great depth. Two, three deep there to continue to rotate. A little bit concerns up front with the, with with the, the defensive tackles. You've been recruiting to a three down front for so long. All you need is one guy you can rotate in and out. Now all of a sudden you need two two bodies in there at all times. So something they may hit this transfer portal when it opens up today. But they love those defensive ends. And in this league that wants to throw the football, you better have some guys that can get off the edge and get after the quarterback. So a punting situation. Devin Bale, the junior. Out of California, transferred in from Northern Colorado. Booms that one down there. And Bryce Stevens on that return. 
We'll step aside for a moment back right after this. iPhone 14 Pro. Unbelievable camera. Switch to T-Mobile and get one on them. Do you have T-Mobile? Well. And you get Apple TV Plus included. Got that? Well. I love Ted Lasso. T-Mobile also gives you MLS season pass. Do you get all that? Well. Well, 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 well. Join T-Mobile and get the powerful iPhone 14 Pro with Apple TV Plus and MLS Season Pass on the Apple TV app, all on us. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes we find what we're looking for. Sometimes we're rolling easy and free. Sometimes one and one makes three. So much to love along this ride. That's why Nationwide is on your side. We pick up the action ball set on the 35-yard line. And you look at the new defensive coordinator, Travis Williams, first season. Here in Fayetteville, obviously, former Auburn Tiger, played a little linebacker back in the day. And, boy, you want to talk about bringing some energy. This defensive staff as a whole, man, they are high energy. Let's go get them. Well, you need that to, to coach, but you also need that nowadays with, with all your other responsibilities. And, and part of the reason why he was brought in is go in there and crush it when it comes to the transfer portal, which they've done a great job here to start his, his time at Arkansas. And they're, they're, they're excited to get back. And, into that portal today as well and start adding some more guys in there. But he's the personality you want that, that you know, get in front of these players and parents and, and sell what the Razorbacks have to offer. And that's that's the type of coach I want. And I I, I like the defense better. I, I'm, I've always been more of a fan of the four down front compared to three. This, this is still a league that wants to run the football. Okay, Fort in at quarterback. And he'll hand it off to Rocket Sanders. Woo, that's a big old boy. You can hear that collision all the way up here in our broadcast position. That's what he's going to bring. Ran right into Jordan Crook. How you doing? It's always the hard part, though, for defenses in, in a scrimmage like this. Like, yes, you want to show some physicality, but when your star running back's running at you, you're like, it's my boy. Do I really want to take yeah. it down? <laughs> do I want to go low in it? Because you got to go low on Rocket. You, you, do, you better stay below the, the waist because he's going to run you over like that. Side handoff goes to Sanders. That'll be a first down close to the 40-yard line. But man, he lowers those pads. And he is hard to bring down. In a 12. I look at the patience, though. You know, he's in the backfield, the Ooh. vision to kind of see it. And we talk about it's a new offense for for the quarterbacks, but it's also a new offense for the running backs too. They have to learn their lanes, how how certain plays are going to open, especially against a four-down front compared to a three-down front, which they're used to going against in. in, in, in scrimmage situations, but great patience from him and then a great explosion as well. Gordon looking to throw. That one's a little bit high, almost picked off a trailing defender. Came in there, Tyrone Broden was the intended target. Jaden Johnson almost got himself an interception. Some of the defensive back. Now this is a group that was so maligned last year. Injuries decimated. Midway through the season, they were out five starters in the back end. Oh, and you could tell. I mean, they would they're dropping five guys back in coverage and still getting smoked on the back end. They feel really good about their corners. This new scheme, a lot more man-to-man -man coverage. They're gonna be aggressive on the back end. Sanders will get it down to the 35-yard line. And that's what you want from a defensive mentality and a coach and, a, and as a player. I want to be aggressive. Get after the quarterback. We talked about the defensive ends they have, those guys they trust to be able to, to, to force a quarterback to get the ball off his hands. If you have guys that can rush the quarterback in corners that you trust in man coverage and some tight windows, it's going to be a nightmare for an opposing team. Fortin. Pass is caught inside the 30. That'll be good enough for a first down. Ty Washington, who, you know, you were out there yesterday and you came back raving about that young man. Ty Washington is an, another piece to the tight end room. Well, I expect him to run a lot more 12 personnel because of that, because of Has, because of Washington. You know, not extremely big. They're in 12 personnel right now. You see the two tight ends on the field, but just gives you so much, op so many options as a coordinator when it comes to play calling because you got 
a little bit more size to block and then athleticism to be able to go out there and run routes. Fortin will throw, lofts it up toward the end zone, and that one is incomplete, but Andrew Armstrong came down hard. Jaden Johnson back there in coverage. Both guys slow to get up. Armstrong's been a guy that they've said has been making the wow play yep. throughout spring. Well, I've been the most consistent receiver they've had and does a great job on the wheel route. Would have loved to see him still be able to snag that possible pass interference, but they're not going to throw too many flags today. Ooh. While they continue to take a look at Jaden Johnson, we'll step aside for a moment. This is how legends are Chevy Silverado, a new Silverado HD. Choose your own path with the number one best-selling retail full-size pickup and see where it takes you. Find new roads. It's Chevy truck season. Get 0% financing plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2023 Silverado 1500 pickups or get 2250 total cash allowance on a 2023 Silverado with a turbo high output engine. See your super Chevy dealers today. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes we find what we're looking for. Sometimes we're rolling easy and free. Sometimes one and one makes three. So much to love along this ride. That's why Nationwide is on your side. Well, there is Jaden Johnson. He got up on, under his own power and shaking things off. The uh, junior defensive back out of Cedartown, Georgia, up in the northwest part of the state. Looks like he's still shaking off the cobwebs on that when a collision in the end zone. Sam Pittman ran his field goal unit out there. And got a 47-yard field goal from his excellent kicker, Cam Little. Well, that's always the worry in, in, in a scrimmage and in, in kind of why I asked Sam Pittman at the beginning, like, how physical do you want to be? How, because you know, first things first, when it comes to spring, you want to get better, but you also want to stay healthy. You want these kids feeling good heading into summer. First look at the freshman from Kennesaw, Georgia, Malachi Singleton. Mm. Throws on the run, a nice looking pass inside the 50 yard line. That'll be a first down and a gain of 17. How about that for your first pass as a freshman? Hey, we're gonna give you a little play action pass rollout, not in the flat like KJ got in her first play, but a 15 yard deep out with a little pressure in your face as well. He knows obviously he's not going to get hit, but nice little frozen rope to get his career started off in front of the fans. Yeah, he came in to Arkansas as a four-star. ESPN ranked him as the ninth best dual threat quarterback in the country. No, loose football. They're going to say he was down around the 35, and that's a good way to not get many reps. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to the football, young fella. Hold on to the baby. What are we doing? <laughs> it, contact is coming. I know you can't get hit, but you better practice good ball security there. But does show off that little dual threat ability, running the football. Great read. Defensive end crashes, making the right decision. But they want to learn right now. That's I think that's one of the big things in spring. Can a coaching staff, can they trust you to take care of the football, run the system? Do the little things right. And off off the right side to Bockert. Jezreel Bockert, a fourth running back on the group, along with Sanders, Green, and Dominion. It's a great job by the offensive line blocking up front. It's been a unit that, that's rotated a bunch this spring. You know, really every single day it's been a hodgepodge of who's going to be with the ones, who's going to be with the twos, who's going to be the threes. So, they feel decent heading into to summertime, but still a lot of work to be done come fall camp. They will hand it or keep it with Singleton, who gets into the end zone. Might have got away with one. Looked like a defensive player. Might have been able to grab a jersey back there about five yards after the line of scrimmage. But they will see what they decide to do with it here. I don't know, looks pretty clean to me, and oh, I think come he's... Come on, come on, you're such an offensive he's quarterback. He's shocking now. that defense a little bit with the come speed on. he's JJ got, Hollingsworth too. Hollingsworth was right there. He put his hand on no, him. Oh, no, 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 no. You, th <laughs> you think us quarterbacks are, are soft like that? Come on, we can break some tackles now. 
Uh, I'm impressed with this kid so far. He looks good. Looks like he's in command of the offense. And... Oh. He's not in command of the football. He puts that one on the deck, and it's recovered by the defense. So Singleton, who Dan Eno says really never gets rattled, might have gotten rattled as he dropped that football. Well, joining us now, putting on a headset, is the quarterback for the Arkansas Razorbacks, K.J. Jefferson. K.J., thanks for joining us, Dave Neal and Aaron Murray up here. Um, hey, you know, just from a – you've played a lot of quarterback over your life. But when you get a new coordinator, a new system, how important and how different has this spring been for you in terms of looking ahead to the fall? Uh, just being able to pay attention to the smaller details. I mean, as a new coordinator coming in, new system, uh, everybody had to adjust. So I, I, I treat it as adversity and – just being able to have adversity in my life and knowing how to cope with it and uh, be able to overcome it. So just doing the little details, uh, staying out to practice, looking at film, studying my playbook on weekends. So just being able to be dedicated and be disciplined enough to know uh, what I have to do and what's ahead of me. So watching you guys at practice yesterday, KJ, a lot of emphasis on the fundamentals, which is great, especially this time of year. But talk about your footwork under center, how you've worked on that, where it's at right now, and, and how much more needs to be done this summer. I mean, it's always room for improvement because, uh, I mean, I'm so hard on myself and I have a higher ceiling. So it's always room for improvement, improvement but uh, I'm loving it. Uh, it's fun being under center. I'm starting to like under center more than shotgun now. But, I mean, uh, it's fun just being able to get under center and uh, be able to look at the defense and change different things, call different audibles and stuff like that that gets me prepared for the next level. So I'm enjoying it. It's fun. I mean, like you said, fundamentals. I mean, Coach Enos really is – That's I mean, that's his baby. So being able to just – be very fundamental, uh, lower body, footwork, uh, always active, always moving in the pocket, eye downfield. So I would approach to being a, a great elite quarterback. Hey, KJ, I know last year physically was kind of a, a tough time for you. How bad was it a year ago? I mean, were you just really struggling just to, to be able to do the normal things, everyday things? Uh, it was. I mean, I thought I got uh, my uh, SC uh, sprain. I mean, it was hard on me. It was very hard just being able not to practice and not be able to throw in help my teammates and put them in the best position to win. So, I mean, it was very it was very frustrating at moments, but, I mean, just being able to be around those guys and they get my mind off of it and just embracing them. And at that point, being hurt, I mean, my mindset just turned to a coach and being able to help and guide and still lead on the field and off the field. So, I mean, it was pretty frustrating, but, I mean, teammates like I have, they always keep me on my toes and making sure that I'm doing what I need to do. Speaking of having a coach, you have a bunch of brand-new receivers from different spots, the guys that transferred in, freshman, freshman receiver, uh, but they all look good. I mean, I was surprised with the size of those guys watching them in practice yesterday. How excited are you with these new transfers and getting to work with them this summer some more? Uh, it was pretty fun, I mean, getting those guys in, I mean, on weekends and in the offseason, just being able to learn how those guys run routes and, and uh, just getting the timing thing down. So, and also just coming in and just picking their brains a little bit, just being able to let's sit down, get on the board, drop some plays what they're thinking in this coverage. Is they reading the boundary triangle, field triangle? Just So just being able to get in and pick their brains a little bit and just really harp on the details, and especially in this offense. All right, before we get out of here, just give us a quick thumbnail on what the expectations are for you in this offense versus what we saw from you last year. How different will that be? Uh, I mean, expectations are really high. I mean, we want to be able to look complex but remain simple on offense. I mean, that's our motto. I mean, we want to throw different looks at the defense and try to get them off balance and – just being able to just run our offense but throw different little eye candy in there as well. So being able to dry, have successful drive, score in the red zone, and uh, run up the scoreboard. Great talking with you. It's good to see you healthy and uh, stay that way. Look forward to seeing you in the fall. All right, thank y'all. KJ Jefferson. Boy, look at uh, some of the numbers. He's chasing down some, some big time numbers for the quarterbacks in the history of this program. Top 10 in completions, touchdown passes, passing yards, total yards, TDs responsible for. By the way, we have seen a nice arm from Jacoby Criswell. A couple of those passes were called back, but I mean, he can spin it now. I mean, that, that touchdown obviously wasn't a touchdown, but just the pure arm strength of launching it. <laughs> and then the, 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 the play a few plays later where he moves in the pocket, that subtle slide to the left, and then throws about a 20-yard rope. I'm like, woo wee you know, there, there's no quarterback competition, obviously, with this team right now. KJ is the guy, but you always have to feel good because of some of those injuries last year. That they have some pretty good depth and, and, and some older guys that have played a little bit in their career on the roster as well. Griswell pitches it near side. And how many, I, you know, there, I, I have obviously haven't gone this deep in the stats, but I would be willing to bet that 60 to 70% of the colleges 
major college football have had to start a second string or even a third string quarterback at a game during the course of a season. Oh my gosh. So the importance of having a solidified game ready number two is vital. College football, I mean, we saw in the NFL last year. I mean, there was 50, I think high 50s, low 60s quarterbacks started in the NFL last year. And, and you need that backup guy, especially with, you know, when you do have a running quarterback, you know, you, a guy like KJ who, you know, whether it's a design runner or not heading to this year, we talked about them maybe not having as many of those this season to protect him, but still, he, there's that natural athleticism in him where he's going to take off, he's going to pull it, and he gets in those situations where he's going to get banged up a little bit. So those chances of him making it through a season go down, obviously, a little bit. So, yeah, you feel great as a coordinator having a second guy that you can rely on. And, and right now, I think they feel really, really good with that room heading into the season. KJ Jefferson back on the field, but that offensive line, of course, trying to figure some things out. Uh, what they do know is that Bo Limmer will be the center, and he will be a good one. 6'5", 300-pounder, a fifth-year player out of Tyler, Texas, moving over from a guard spot, 30 career starts. He's a preseason All-American on some lists already. Hand off to Sanders. Patrick Kudis, they move from guard out to tackle early in the spring. Um, I think one of the areas that Sam Pittman talked to us about is they need to go find a center. I mean, he doesn't feel real good about not having four or five centers. Yeah. Well, first of all, they feel good with Bo. You know, Bo played guard last year, and, and you know, we're excited to get him back and move him to center. But same thing with the quarterback. You know, if, if something does happen, knock on wood, you know, they're another guy that touches the ball every single play. So you better have two or three deep there and something that coach may want to look at during the portal opening here over the next couple weeks to maybe bring someone in to start working on that position. Got Brady Latham up there, the fifth-year senior out of Oklahoma. He's made 36 starts, uh, straight starts for this offensive line. So, I mean, there are some pieces there. You got Joshua Braun, who's a transfer from Florida, spent three years down in Gainesville. Tyke Crawford, he transferred in from Charlotte. He has five career starts, another senior. A couple of starts last year at right tackle. He's a, they're going to call K.J. Jefferson down as Landon Jackson again disrupting the play. We've said that a few times already with Landon Jackson. Well, it's a great, great stunt there from him coming to the defensive end. They're actually going to blitz a linebacker. It's going to take the center, and then he's wrapping right around and just did not pass it off fast enough from the offensive line. And you know, we can't not talk enough about these defensive ends, how athletic they are. And you saw in that play, too, that man-to-man -man coverage we've described. You know, as a quarterback, your timing is going to be thrown off because of the press coverage. And all of a sudden, you got speed coming off the edge or right there in your face. Just not enough time to get the ball out. All right, we'll step aside for a moment. Back in a moment. If your internet comes from T-Mobile, you should know it's just phone internet, not home internet. <laughs> Cox Internet is faster and has more reliable download speeds than T-Mobile 5G home internet. Cox keeps you up to speed, especially during peak hours when you need it most. So don't get phone internet, get real home internet from Cox. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win, sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes we find what we're looking for. Sometimes we're rolling easy and free. Sometimes one and one makes three. So much to love along this ride. That's why Nationwide is on your side. KJ Jefferson still in a quarterback going deep. Incomplete, under through. Sam Bakke, the sophomore receiver out of Kittesaw, Georgia. Boy, look at some of those numbers. I mean, just uh, impressive. And if he stays healthy, he will set new standards around here. I also think if he stays healthy and, and he takes the, the, the steps that I'm, I'm anticipating, the coaching staff is anticipating, He's going to be making a lot of money next yeah. season. I think he's a high draft pick. I'm, I'm, I've been high on him. 
And now he's going to be in this system, taking some steps mentally as a quarterback. We talk about the changing of plays, redeclaring the mic, all that. He's really going to impress that next level. KJ stepping up. Right down the middle, pass is caught there. And that'll be a touchdown for Satania. As he goes 65 yards, as KJ Jefferson hit him right in the numbers. I mean, this is something that's always been impressive from KJ. The step, 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 get up in the pocket, keep his eyes down the field, and then throws a dart to Satanga. And they're, they're excited about number 16. I mean, they like to get him the, space, the ball in space, whether it's jet sweeps, tunnel screens, but has that speed and that quickness to step on the toes of the defender like he did right there, get on top, and then KJ with the accuracy down the field to hit him for the touchdown. Not a lot of things that that young man, KJ Jefferson, cannot do with the football in his hand. Well, I mean, that's a good indication of, of what we might be seeing from Satania. Lines up in the slot. He and Bryce Stevens, and they had the linebacker, Greer, on him. And you get those mismatches. K.J. saw it, and they struck for 65 yards. I mean, they worked that footwork hard. I mean, I've never seen a coach, you know, really – I mean, between every single period. So they'd go 11-on-11 11 11 or 7-on-7, 7 7, and as soon as it was individual time, it wasn't, hey, let's hang out, let's, you know, go over the plays. It's, hey, footwork, where are the bags, where are the ladders, where's this, where's that? And they were actually filming, which was awesome to see. They were filming the quarterback's footwork, the five-step drops, the three-step drops, the play action. And, and, and Coach Enos was telling us that he, you know, he sends that to the quarterbacks to watch. You know, they're not just watching film, they're watching their fundamental time with the coaching staff, understanding that it is a big adjustment. And you know, we're seeing progress here this afternoon. We saw some progress during the 14 days of practice leading up to this as well. And you know, if they can keep that up, because it all starts with the fundamentals, man. If you, can, if you have confidence, you're not thinking about a five-step drop and just reacting, then all of a sudden you can just play ball again. KJ Jefferson will run back out there in offense. and we. Dan Enos told us yesterday about the importance of every single rep they can get KJ is an important one. And mm. he keeps it here, and he'll take it down around the 45-yard line. But normally in these spring, especially with a guy like him, you don't see their your returning starter running 40 plays in no. a spring scrimmage. Well, he's not getting hit, so you feel good about that. That was a sweet little pump right there to the running back. He's not getting hit, so you're not worried about him getting knocked out. No no idiot on defense is going to blindside him either. And he needs the reps. I agree. You know, even when I, as a four-year starter in the same system with Bobo, I was still like, give me as many reps as I can yeah. get. There's always something new to learn. A certain play against a certain defense that maybe you haven't repped yet or you want to get repped. This is all learning for him. I guarantee you KJ will be in the film room tonight or tomorrow watching this tape, dissecting his footwork. Dissecting how the plays unfolded against certain defensive coverages, protections, and we're ready to go. I mean, that's you talk to the staff and people in that in that facility. They say he is has always been bought in, but even more so this offseason, making sure that he's ready to go for possibly his last season here wearing the red. KJ stands tall in that pocket, throws it underneath, pass is caught there by Andrew Armstrong. Andrew transfers in from Texas A&M Commerce. Played there for four years. He just, he looks the part. He does, 6'4", you know, long, lanky, can run. They got size, and, and I know the game has changed a little bit, and people love the quick little receivers, and we saw Santanga go get the, the long touchdown, but you know, for a quarterback thrown over the middle of the field, I love a good 6'4 receiver. I mean, Tesla 6'4", Armstrong 6'4", Jaden Wilson 6'3". Broden 6'7". Bake, Bake is 6'3". I mean, this is a, maybe if you line them up, the tallest set of receivers yeah. you'll find in the country. It's a big team. It is a big team. And, and, you know, they are changing their identity on offense. They do want to get more physical. And, and we've talked about the personnel grouping differences, too. But it's just a big physical team that's going to want to wear you down and then take some shots afterwards with some play action passes. And 
we're, I think we're going to see more of a shift back to that for offenses across the SEC. Like there was this shift of let's spread you out, let's go up tempo, let's go fast. We'll still see that, and Arkansas will still show that at times this year, being multiple with their personnel and being multiple with their tempo. But at the end of the day, football is football. And, and, and Sam Pittman really emphasized it this spring. If you can be the more physical team, offensively and defensively, you're going to give yourself a chance to win a lot of ball games in this league. Jefferson, quick slant over the middle on third down. Incomplete. He was trying to hit Bryce Stevens. Coverage on that back end by Jalen Lewis. If you had to pick an area of biggest concern from a defensive standpoint, would it be the Arkansas secondary? Would it be trying to replace the talented linebacker you lost? Would it be the defensive front and can we get pressure on the quarterback where would you stack that priority see, see I, I mean I, I, th I thought originally it'd be more the linebacker spot I mean when you lose Drew Sanders and, and bumper pool I mean Drew is both of them absolutely incredible leading tackler but I feel pretty good about that but defensive tackle we'll, yeah. we'll get more of that later we'll step aside Cam Little he's a good one back in a moment back at Reynolds Razorback Stadium the Arkansas red and white game, and while we were away, they ran one play, and it looks as though Amarian Harris is down, number 76, the redshirt freshman out of Little Rock. Was a good get for this coaching staff. The young man was had offers from Georgia, Oklahoma, Miami, Tennessee, A and M. But his dad played football here as a fullback. That certainly gave him an edge, but 76 on the left side just gets. Mm. Boy, just got rolled up on by a defensive player. So the drive will continue on second down. They will hand it off. To Rashad DeBinion, sophomore running back out of Ellenwood, Georgia, with the Cedar Grove High School. 293 yards and five touchdowns last year. Had 112 yards rushing, a couple of touchdowns against Kansas in that bowl game. Paid Fortin underneath, pass caught there by Ty Washington. Ty had just one catch last year. Got a feeling that number will increase considerably in 2023 as he picks up 18. I cannot tell you how impressed I've been with these, these quarterbacks, all of them so far in this game. Just their command of the offense, their patience inside the pocket. Helps when you know you're not gonna get hit, but still good pocket awareness and movement. Stood up there. Yeah, I, I do want to go back to the question before the break. You, you, you brought up to me about where on this defense am I a little bit concerned about. And I do feel good about the linebacking spot. You know, watching Antonio Greer, the transfer from USF, go out there and play a little bit of practice yesterday and talk with people on the staff. They, they've loved what they've seen from him. His command of the defense, his leadership, extremely tough. A nice little pick six in practice actually yesterday and just saw his athleticism. Feel good there. I think defense to tackle. They just need more, more bodies now that they've run a four down front to be able to get a good rotation in there. Boy, big collision. Bakke made the catch, held on to the football. Got it back to the line of scrimmage. He pops up. Yeah, Greer's a guy I think is going to be an impact right away. The grad transfer, two-time All-AAC. He had 230 career tackles, 23 of those behind the line. Had a team-best 92 stops last year. Pass is caught for a first down around the 20 yard line. Again, it's Isaiah Satania, the redshirt freshman out of Fayetteville High School, right just across the street from where we are. Oh, you see the pressure. Great job up front from the defense offensive line. And then 
You know, anytime you have a dig route over the middle of the field with man-to-man -man coverage, if your slot, if your your slot receiver can win that battle versus the nickel, there's no one left. Great route from him, and I agree, man. He's played extremely well in this game. Has that quickness, has that wiggle, has that that home run playmaking ability. You got the size in the outside with some of those transfers. We've talked about the guys, 6'4", 6'5", 6'7". Now all of a sudden you do have that shifty guy in the slot that can win those matchups against linebackers and nickels that also runs really, really good routes that you can trust can win over the middle of the field. Also a track star in high school was the Arkansas Gatorade Track and Field Performer of the Year. To the corner of the end zone, trying to hit the aforementioned Satania. How about his day? Mm. 17 yards. I mean, first off, let, let's give the quarterback some love too. Cade, Cade with course. an absolute dime. You know, let, don't, don't sleep on the throw. I mean, put yeah. it, if you want to put the trash can in the back of the end zone, he put it in the trash yeah. can. So applause to the quarterback. And then, yes, I mean, I just gave, you know, Satania some love. So we'll, we'll right. We don't want to over don't over, yeah. overkill him, but. Yeah, he's balling out. MVP for the first part of this scrimmage. Number 16, second touchdown. Has a few big-time catches to, to get this thing going. He had a couple of catches last year. A little pump. Faking like they're, they're going to do the bubble screen to the outside with the motion. And then great extension. Strong hands. But a happy quarterback who knows he just threw an absolute little early Christmas present down the chimney right there. Blake Ford coming on to attempt a lengthy point after. And can't get it through the uprights. But a nice drive there led by Cade Fortin. Cade got a little bit of work last year. Started his career in North Carolina, then went to USF before making his way to Fayetteville. Arkansas's schedule will start on September 2nd against Western Carolina. Then they get Kent State here, and then it gets really intense. Game three, BYU. Game four, LSU. Game five, Texas A&M. Game six, at Ole Miss. Game seven at Alabama. Oof. I mean, they, you know, after BYU, they're not home again until October 21st. Yeah. You know, at LSU, that AM game's a neutral site, at Ole Miss, at Alabama. I mean, that is a grind of, of a five weeks. And BYU, uh, the new Big 12 team, BYU, uh, it's going to be a toughie here at home. So, yeah, you you want to have a good start. You know, if there's a way you can go 3-0, that is what you need to get things going to start the 2023 season off before that gauntlet of a, of a road schedule. I feel like Arkansas never has an easy schedule. Just life in the SEC and some of their tough, you know, games they, they play outside the conference as well. Nice catch on the outside by Landon Rogers. Didn't play last year. Was a high school quarterback, a sophomore at a Little Rock, Parkview High School. Another big winner. We talk about Satania having a, having a, and the quarterbacks really dominating this first part of this scrimmage. Dan Enos looks like he's he's feeling himself with these skill players and quarterbacks. Nice Good catch team. there from Hunter Talley, the tight end. Another tight end. Because I usually. When it comes to, I know both teams or both sides are, are learning new systems, but it usually takes a lot longer for the offense. There's just a lot more moving pieces. A lot more things have to go right to feel comfortable. And you, know, you have to feel pretty confident, only 15 practices in, that this offense looks pretty darn good here in this scrimmage. Again, goes back to Tally. The redshirt freshman walk-on. Didn't play last year. And Looks like he might be getting some reps when the fall gets here. Tell you what, it's not a big tight end group. I mean, you, you look, you go down like, you know, Washington's 244, has is 226, Tally 234. The biggest one is Nathan Bax at 252. That handoff 
goes to Rashad DeBinion. Not, not to compare them to this guy, but, but Brock Bowers is about 230, 235. You know, it's, it's a different game nowadays. You need a guy that's, that's good enough to block. And, and, you know, they told us Luke Haas, you know, is, is going to continue to put on size, but is willing to at least get dirty a little bit. But it was also, you know, the, the guys that you can move around that you can flex. I mean, the amount of times I saw Ty Washington flex around in practice and, you know, you're going to see him moved around this offense. Like, those guys are such matchup nightmares against linebackers and, and DBs because of their size and their, and their athleticism. Sebo will be touched and that'll go down as a sack, but there's a look at that receiving core. And we've already seen the, the efforts today of Satania. He has been the star in that group, without a doubt. And will the you know, we haven't seen Tyrone uh, Broden. He's been a little banged up. A new transfer. Who was the tallest wide receiver, actually tied with a couple other guys at six foot seven. And again, some pressure from that defensive line. This time Singleton gets touched in the backfield. And wholesale changes being made. I don't know. So we'll step aside quickly as there's a change in the offense and the defense. Back in a moment. Back in Fayetteville at the Arkansas Red and white game. I have a hard time calling it a game with no clock and no score, but a scrimmage. K.J. Jefferson in at quarterback, hands it off to Rocket Sanders. Tell you what, there's been six sacks by this Arkansas defense today. Um, but this is a group, certainly, that eyes will be on this group. Need to step that up a little bit. They gave up over 30 points a game, 90th in the country last year, and injuries played a big part of that. But with the four-man front, Obviously, uh, things change for the linebackers and how they're going to play. And looks like they've got a couple of guys. Chris Ball Jr. is a guy that got a lot of work last year. 62 stops, had seven and a half tackles for loss. They call him Poo, and he certainly is a guy that uh, we will see a lot of. And I'm anxious to see how Antonio Greer fits into this mix as well, transferring in from USF. Well, I think he's going to fit in just perfectly. His size, his strength, his athleticism. He's played a lot of football, and 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 really has stepped up as a leader early on. And I only, you know, I expect that to continue throughout summer and fall workouts and in practice. But you know, they really like the, the the young freshmen too that are on campus. Brad Spence, Carson Dean, looked the part physically. You know, you're going to see them obviously most likely a lot on special teams, but are going to obviously have to play a role too with inside the, the rotation at the linebacking spot, but they love the fact that they came in mid-year and already making a difference on this team. KJ stands up, throws a little seed across the middle. That is incomplete. Uh, the two freshman linebackers, obviously you said they're kind of built physically like Linebackers, Should. as we think, 6'2", 240, 6'4", 230, uh, 232, both coming out of the state of Texas. Both highly sought after young men, but getting them here early, I think, is just critical for those guys to be ready to play in the fall. I mean, 12 guys mid-year. It's just, it's amazing, Dave, the, the difference, you know, even 12 years ago, I, I was a mid-year guy. There's only three guys that came in together with me mid-year. Now all of a sudden, you know, the majority of teams in the SEC have 10 to, to 20, some of them mid-year guys. The majority of your freshmen have already been through sometimes practice and bowl games, a full spring, a full semester of classes, and are, and, and, and are ready to go come summer and then fall camp. Yeah, these, these reps, we talked about with just the offense and defense being different. It is even more vital that you get all these guys involved right now, get the tape, let them go back there, digest it over the next few months, and then you hope come fall you see those guys playing at a higher level, playing with some more speed. The Binion at running back. He gets the handoff and is met immediately in the backfield for a loss of four. A tackle made by Braxton, one of those freshmen that came in early. 
out of Frisco, Texas. Four star defensive back. Third down. Colby Criswell steps up in the pocket, and they'll say he is down by contact. So another sack. That's seven of those for the defense today. Marcus Miller saying, not on my watch. 6'5", 306-pound, fifth-year senior. Oh, well, you better be able to get from the quarterback if you're going to play this much man coverage on the back end because, the, you know, DBs, they, they want to be aggressive, but they start getting a little hesitant if, if the quarterback has four or five seconds to throw the football. Broken tackle by Bakke, and he will get it down the near sideline to the 34-yard line. Well, that's good to see from a freshman quarterback, understanding when you're hot. And it that 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 corner blitz that that off the edge right there is really hard to see at times. You know, a little bit easier to see when you're in the gun, but I mean, you have to see backside safety rotation a little bit too. See that guy creeping off the off the hashes, give you a little indicator that hey, there may be a little bit of a corner cat blitz from my left. Sees it, gets the ball out right now. Doesn't even have to find the laces. Accurate pass, and then enough time for the receiver to shed a tackle on that coming that safety coming down to get the first. Singleton now at quarterback. Oh, boy, what a throw. Boy, he just dropped that right between a couple of defenders to tie Washington. I want to talk about that tight end group once again. Does a great job in the route running of getting the safety to be on the inside, gaining that leverage immediately based on his initial route running and then break into the sideline. And then, yeah, the freshman with a beautiful throw, nice and high, lets his receiver go, tight end go up there and catch the football. Hopefully he ties okay, but I'll tell you what, man, the, 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 the tight end position has evolved so much and in all levels of, of football from high school all the way up to the NFL level. And, and you're seeing some of the best teams in college right now utilize these hybrid guys, these guys that they look like they should be on the basketball court because of their size, but are, are physical enough to get out here and play some football. So Arkansas will punt it away. Of course, Travis Williams, your defensive coordinator, Marcus Woodson, considered your code DC, and those two guys trying to put this defense together. First flag this spring, not bad. Devin Bale to punt this away. So for more on Coach Williams and Coach Woodson. So far, so great. I mean, it's a great culture here. Uh, the players are bought in to what we're doing on defense. The leader of the defense and Coach Travis Williams is, is creating a mindset that is what I believe in as well and what we believe in as a staff. And, you know, it couldn't be any better at this point. We got everybody. Here we go. Sit up in your chair. Feet on the floor, hogs on the ready, ready. A culture of just love, that's the first thing. You know, they just know, okay, our coaches love us and our coaches care about us because we're going to ask them to do hard things. You're going to have to get your tail to the ball. You're going to have to come to practice, go to meetings. You're going to have to go to class, but they know we care about them. Now work a move, work a move, snacks, work a move, work a move. I love Coach T. Will. I, ain't, I can't even fake it with you. Uh, man, high energetic guy, man. If y'all meet him, you know, he. He's just that guy that's just going to uplift the room. Ah, right, trust it. Stay outside. Go, 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 go. We go. Everybody out. Go. Well, after interviewing with Sam Pittman, Coach Pittman immediately called Hunter Yurichek, the athletic director here at Arkansas, and said, this is our guy. And obviously, he's got an infectious personality. He's played in this league, played at Auburn. And it's easy to, to believe in his energy and his vision. Well, I think Coach Pittman, too, is just excited for the, the entire, this, this whole new staff, you know, and, and not saying there's anything wrong with the previous staff and, and great coaches, and they wish them luck on their way out to, to their new locations. But, you know, the, 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 the new challenge and the new excitement of both an offense and defense, and, you know, especially this defensive side, you know, has a long way to go from last year, but feel like they have the pieces of the coaching staff and on the defensive side, the football player-wise, to, to make that jump. And, and all eyes will be on them this season. K.J. Jefferson still 
getting some work. You know, Coach Bidman was talking to us about the changes, and he kind of felt it coming on toward the end of the year that something needed to change. He said he called it chaos, really started after that Missouri game, getting ready for the bowl game. Yep. He didn't have nine starters available for that bowl game that they ended up winning in overtime over Kansas. And, um, you know, give him credit, man. He, he, he went out there and, you know, makes some changes, not afraid to do it. When it, it's funny you talk to these new coaches and the first thing that they said is you know when we showed up here at Arkansas this offseason it's amazing that the, the, how strong the culture already was and that we were showing up to something where the kids worked hard the kids wanted to be in the building they wanted to be in the film room they wanted to get in workouts and you know every single day of practice has been a joy and and, and coach Pittman told us like you know this team reminds me a lot of the 2021 season just with with the foundation with inside the locker room guys wanting to be around each other and that's where it starts at the end of the day if, if if you have coaches that you enjoy working with if players enjoy working with those coaches that we just saw in that in that little hogs plus episode right there and 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 all that kumbaya with inside the facility they're going to come out guns blazing swinging having some fun so I'm, I'm excited and i know sam Pittman is for this football team he thinks it's a pretty special one on fourth down, they will hand it off to A.J. Green. And he'll have the first down. Well, it looks like we're getting into some situational football mindset of possibly, hey, this is four down territory. Can, we, can you pick up a first down? And the difference this year, too, with the, the way they're going to run their offense is they feel like they're going to get more of these fourth and short situations. 63 plays down this red white game back in a moment sometimes we lose sometimes we win sometimes we try to fit it all in sometimes we don't know what's in store sometimes we find what we're looking for sometimes we're rolling easy and free sometimes one and one makes three so much to love along this ride that's why nationwide is on your side it's okay breathe you think you can beat me we gotta stop him let's go oh we're all gonna die Arkansas continuing on in their final spring practice of 2023. 15 of them. That's all you get. Some, some schools will have their spring game, spring scrimmage, and then have a couple of practices after that to kind of button up things. But this is it for Arkansas, and the transfer portal opens up. Um, you've got two-week period, I believe, to get your name? Or, you have to get your yeah. name in there. Right. Something that I did not know, but, but Sam Pittman educated us on, is you, know, you can't transfer within the conference anymore. Like, that window had to be done, you know, that, that opportunity had to be done during the first opening of the portal. So now if you are going to get someone, or if you're someone leaving a team, you have to go outside your conference, which I think is great at the moment. But it's there's, there's no downtime for these coaches. It is... We all think, oh, they get paid all this money, but they, they are 24-7, 365. You go from this grinding spring, you know, going to have to entertain a bunch of recruits after this to get right into figuring out what, what, what areas that you need help on in the portal to try to, to make those corrections here in the next couple weeks to get that roster feeling a little bit better for you as a staff heading into the summer workouts. Well, he does have available seven scholarships available to use. Uh, they've already plucked one player. They got a uh, Maryland transfer defensive end on Wednesday, Anthony Tank Booker, 6'4", 320 pounder. I was thinking about Ohio State, Texas A&M, South Carolina, and Purdue, but a fifth year senior. He's going to find his way here to Arkansas, just another big body on the defensive side. Well, I think this is a great time too, because now your, your, your new staff, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, can look at your roster, say, okay, I, I didn't recruit these guys. But now I've seen him for 15 practices, a few scrimmages. This is a guy that I do feel like can fit my system. This is a guy that maybe not, or this is an area that we can improve on. So this is, this is we talk about like how much of a need this spring is for Arkansas. 
because of the transfer portal, it's even important now because of the fact that you can assess guys, once again, that you haven't recruited. Okay, let me get in the portal. We got seven to, to kind of wiggle with. Player-wise, let's go out there and improve X position before summertime. So Arkansas looks like they're going to be working on red zone. They'll start with the high red zone here in period 10. They'll do a little sweep mm. to Bakke, and it works quite well. 18 yards for the touchdown around that right side. Well, if that's your first red zone play, I think the red zone offense might be pretty good. Yeah, that's not too <laughs> right. One for one. And that's an easy uh, under center for, for KJ, too. Just turn around, hand the ball off to a speedy receiver coming from the slot. And, and you're a little bit concerned from the angles from that, that secondary a little bit. That's always the hard part about a spring is you, know, you, you love the offense production. You know, no one wants a, a Florida spring game, which we saw the other night, a 7-7 seven seven in the fourth quarter. So you love to see the offense going. You love to see KJ feeling, you know, looking like he feels comfortable in the system. But still, one of the big worries is, is how much this defense can improve from last year to this year. So you do kind of say, oh, that is our team getting scored on. So I don't know how much I want to celebrate. We'll change out quarterbacks. Cade Fortin will take this snap. And he'll hand it off to A.J. Green working the right side. He'll get it down to the close to the 10-yard line. Dave, I do think one of the position battles that, that I'm, I'm interested in seeing, we touched on it a little bit earlier, is, is the backup quarterback spot. I do think you have two really talented quarterbacks in the back, you know, that, that they feel good with, with Jacoby and Cade, that have looked really impressive in command of this offense here in, 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 in this scrimmage game. And that's something that's going to be ongoing to see who's going to be backing up KJ this, off, this season. Fortin, they're going to rule him down another sack that one came from nico davier and that one would have hurt roll out to the left play action with a free defensive in your face you're hoping that he comes down a little bit but it's almost been almost a a, a feast or famine defense this afternoon you know been great getting after the quarterback but definitely have given up some explosive plays both in the run game. A couple big explosive plays on the back end too. Fortin. And he will be sacked again. Nine of those. Great coverage on the back end. Area of strength. They really feel good about these corners, They're leaving them on an island, playing some man to man coverage. Safety is maybe a little bit of a concern. You know, that's something that they're going to continue to work on, maybe bring a guy in there during this, this opening of the portal as well. But corner wise, they got some length, they got some speed. Guys that want to be physical. Here is Blake Ford, and he'll miss that field goal. So the three offense and the three defense coming on the field to work their red zone. But, you know, we talked a lot about the new staff. There's new terminology. But I'm always curious, like, you see, this game is based so much on signals and cards on the sideline. That's a whole new process. So how difficult is it to – because you got to digest that in seconds. You can't oh, yeah. think about that. So how hard is that in the process? We talk about terminology, but that part of it. It's, a, it's learning a new language. It is. it is. It is extremely hard to then get it, then make the calls, make the checks – for every position on both sides of the football. I think the good thing is now with, with college football and some of the new rule changes is you do get the winter workouts to meet with players. You know, before it was just workouts and that was it. Now they can actually meet, they can get on the field, they can run through plays, they can watch film and the same thing in the summertime. You know, it's no longer just the quarterback leading these workouts. Coaches can go out there and, 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 and actually meet with them. So I think a lot of these new rules benefit a team that needs it, like Arkansas, when it comes to the new staff. Nice little pitch and catch there. Cameron Bibby with the great catch in the corner of the end zone. 18 yards out. A lot to like here. Criswell slinging it on the run. His third touchdown pass today. 
Chevy Silverado and new Silverado HD. Choose your own path with the number one best-selling retail full-size pickup and see where it takes you. Find new roads. It's Chevy truck season. Get 0% financing plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2023 Silverado 1500 pickups or get 2250 total cash allowance on a 2023 Silverado with a turbo high output engine. See your super Chevy dealers today. Lizard goes medieval. Every day is hump day. Guys, what? off with his head! <laughs> Kidding! Did you see the look on his face? Hello! Quasi rated R. Hey, a moment ago on a little red zone play, they get it out to the freshman tied in. Luke has takes it into the end zone. Working now with the second team offense, Criswell. It's to Binion. Wait, it's kind of weird. I just saw DeBinion running full speed to give the football back to the official, and it was so, you know, you talked to Kendall Bryles about his offense, man. He had to train these guys. The moment you're down, you pop up and you run to the official and give them the football and line up. I don't know that we're going to see much of that no. speed anymore. That ball's batted in the air, and it's picked off. Picked off by Ladarius Bishop. <laughs> you think the defense likes that? Man, that's a great job by Antonio Greer, though. You know, similar to what he did in practice yesterday, getting in front of the pass, deflecting it for his DB to be able to get a great job, pass it off. That's great communication right there. Knows that he has help. Passes over the, the drag route. Was able to come to the backside slant right afterwards. Then a tip drill for, you know, maybe a pick six, but then our MVP. Satania comes. Satania coming in for the big tackle. Bishop will take the pick. Oh. This defense had nine interceptions. They did not, uh, they were not creating turnovers last year, 18 total. That was 92nd in the country. They had 11 fumbles, seven interceptions on the other side, so they were even in the turnover margin. Here's Singleton now running some red zone offense. Hands it off to Bockert. Part of the changes for Sam Pittman also included his strength and conditioning department. Scott Fountain was brought in. And Souders also involved in getting these guys ready to play. And that is such a big part mm -hmm. of these programs now. Well, I mean, look at the facilities yesterday. I mean, I even asked the staff. I said, you know, is this, is this workout facility for, for all athletes? I said, no, this is just a football team. I mean, just massive. Looks like a, an, an, you know, an L.A. fitness in there for the football team. I mean, they have all the bells and whistles, the nutrition, everything. And then obviously the brand-new staff, too. And, and they spend a lot of time with them. I mean, they're with them the entire season. You know, more than the coaches uh, because of some of the rules. So, yeah, you want to make sure that staff has a positive influence on your team in the workouts, the nutrition. Like I said, the, the biggest difference you see nowadays is the emphasis on nutrition. You know, you're able to feed them breakfast, lunch, and dinner, protein shakes whenever you want, all the vitamins. I mean, they, they take care of you. Over the back of the end zone and touchdown. A little draw. Now Danny is going to sleep good tonight. You're, all you're doing right now is you're looking at that backside safety and beautiful throw. That backside safety, Brendan Watson just settles it all. And you know you have that baseline throw right behind him and throws it right on his face mask. A little bit of a bobble, but is able to hold it in. And Danny is going to feel good tonight, relaxing a little bit, knowing that his quarterbacks, all of them, 
have shown up to play here. It's the first piece of the pie, you know, as a, as a new coordinator, offense coordinator, is do I have quarterbacks that I can trust? And right now he looks like he has quarterbacks that he can trust. And you get that piece done, then all of a sudden the rest of them start to fall in, in, into their places when it comes to the offense line, receivers, tight ends, and running backs. Of course, some familiarity with, between Coach Pittman and Dan Enos back on the staff together. When Coach Pittman was coaching the O-line here back in 2015. So now they will run the two-minute drill. They'll start at the 30-yard line. They will hand it off to Rashad DeBinion. Dan Enos will come out and meet his quarterback. Actually, he's going to huddle up with his guys. Coach Pittman called a timeout. Dan Enos says, well, okay, if you're going to call a timeout, I'm going to go talk to my guys then. Well, and we're going to take a timeout as well. Back in a moment. <laughs> Back here at Reynolds Razorback Stadium. Continuing it on with the red-white game. The band's out. Full force on a warm day. Temperatures up in the 80s today here in Fayetteville. It's a big day. Baseball game later tonight, too. You were on the call last night for the game versus Tennessee. That's nice great. win. Great environment. It's Woo Pig weekend, man. A lot of stuff going on. Softball's going on. Baseball. Red-white game. Had some activity on the lot 44. Before. Saw, some, saw some fraternity parties going on. Yeah. Some, some interesting outfits. Funny. It's funny. Brought that me back to the good it's days. It's funny that you brought that up. Yeah. I was like, if I showed up, do do I do I look young enough to, to still belong? Yeah. Or would I get kicked out? Would I get kicked you, out? You could pull that off. KJ Jefferson. Defense on a fourth down and short. KJ kept it, but he was touched a few yards behind the line of scrimmage, so the defense gets a stop. Travis Williams and Marcus Woodson jumping up and down over their defensive effort. It's a good time to be in Arkansas right now. And I, you know, I know we went over their schedule earlier a little bit, but the one thing that, that you feel confident with with Arkansas this year, if you look at the SEC West right now, is, is they have a lot of positions back that are, that are extremely important, especially KJ. You, know, you are always going to have a chance when you have your starting quarterback back, and especially one of that caliber. Yeah. You look at the rest of the West, and, and there's a lot of question marks with a lot of those teams at a lot of positions. And I think that's this is this is why you should feel confident. You know, there's there's a battle at, at Ole Miss. Mississippi State has a whole new system. Who know who knows what Will Rogers will look like in that system? You know, there's opportunities to take a major step back in the right direction where they feel like they can be, and, and where they were a couple seasons ago. Singleton, nice shuffle of the feet to get it to the near side, and AJ Green, and he'll be out of bounds inside the 40 near the 35-yard line. And I do like his footwork inside the pocket. Just smooth. You know, we illustrated KJ earlier on the big touchdown pass of the shuffle up, shuffle up, shuffle up, keep your eyes down the field and throw it. And, and we've seen it from all these quarterbacks, but Criswell especially, that subtle movement in the pocket. You, know, you don't have to be extremely athletic. They are athletic, but you don't have to be crazy athletic to just move one step to the left, buy that half a second, find your back in the flat, hit him. Criswell. Throws on the run right in the numbers of Armstrong. That'll be a first down. Criswell again. Mm. That one is dropped by A.J. Green. Great job getting through it. Just put it on his, on his chest. But these... 
this two minute, even go back to the red zone too. You know, situational football is is really what you want to see. Because you, know, you just you never work it enough. You really don't. You never work two minutes. Because you're always working on plays. Every day in practice, you're working on plays. But you're not working on two minute every day. You're not working on red zone every day. So these are precious moments to work on these situations for these teams, you know, to, to especially to just get lined up. You know, talk about the new language, the new system to be able to get the play from the sideline, get lined up and, and get the ball snapped within 10 to 15 seconds. They'll run it with A.J. Green. A.J. driving the pile inside the 10 yard line. T.J. Metcalf, the first one there to get him to the ground. question is who's going to close the gap in the West with LSU and Alabama there's got to be a team in there uh, Ole Miss looked like it early on then they faltered down the stretch Arkansas is right there with it man they are they are there they are they are there with the rest of that batch that next tier to, to make some noise this year you know a and always interesting because we know they have the talent yeah. you know new offense you know, can they finally actually put it together? Who knows? Mississippi State, new, new staff. You know, what, what is that offense going to look like? How, how does how's the quarterback fit in that situation? They got to play Missouri, you know, just on the other side. But still, Missouri, you know, they got some questions at the quarterback spot, too. There's just, there's, there's not, you, to me, even Alabama, you got questions. I mean, the only team that you should feel really good about in the SEC West is LSU with everything that they have returning from last season. Well, here's how the standings looked last year, the way it all finished up. Of course, Georgia ran the table, but Tennessee made a lot of noise. Six and two in conference play, and then South Carolina, perhaps the surprise of the league, steps up and finishes eight and five and went 500 in conference play over in the East. Now, as far as Arkansas goes, the two teams they play in the East, you mentioned it, Missouri, and they also get a game down in Gainesville as their two cross division opponents. But it, you know, really there's there's LSU, Alabama, just as you look from an outside perspective, you just got to feel Alabama's going to be there again. Yeah. But somebody on those bottom five teams, somebody's going to get in, out of that group and be in the mix when we get to November. Who is it going to be? I, I think it's Arkansas. I yeah. really do. It's not just because we're on the call day, but I, I've, I've just always been such a big fan of KJ and his ability. If he's healthy next year, if he's healthy next year in this system with, with Rocket, with some of these receivers that have been really impressive today, to me, they have that chance to be that number three team in the West, pushing those top two. You know, Auburn, yeah. You know, do they bring in a quarterback through the portal? Do they not? It was kind of hard to judge based on their, their spring game a week ago because of the weather. But, you know, brand new system on both sides. A lot of question marks there with Hugh Freeze of what they're going to look like in year one. Um, Ole Miss has their, their questions at quarterback, who's going to be their starter, and they kind of fell off a little bit. And like I said, Mississippi State, same thing with their new new staff and new offense. So a lot of new in the SEC West. So when you leave here, and based on your, your time at Georgia and going through these spring practices, how many positions will be solidified? Are, are they all open? Does anybody grab a first team spot leaving here today? Uh, I don't. If there's a position battle open, I don't think anything solidified today. Yeah. No, I think that I think if there's anything open, that that's going to go through, especially nowadays, because if a kid knows that you know he ain't going to be the starter after today, he may be in the portal come tomorrow. Yeah. So you you know you're already seven spots down for Sam Pittman. You know, you don't want to be all of a sudden waking up tomorrow and all of a sudden say, hey, by the way, we have now 11 scholarships open because yeah. four guys just hit the portal. So you, know, you, you, you have to really be strategic as a coach of how you speak to the media, how you speak to your team, because you want depth. You want competition. And, and you know, it's great to maybe bring some guys in during this, this next portal opening. 
But those guys got a lot of catching up to do. They got to figure out, you know, how they fit in the culture. They got to figure out the offensive scheme, the defensive scheme. There's a lot of, of you know, introducing these new players to our brand of football over the next three months where if, if you got a guy that you trust in, I'd rather keep him on the roster and, like I said, continue that competition. So they got to play it really, really, really careful uh, and, and hold their cards pretty close. Can you believe we're talking, having this conversation? <laughs> I can't think about it. It's crazy. <laughs> Uh, Don't lie to the players, but, you know, just just Right. It's a, it's a game within the game. <laughs> it is a game within the game. And if you need somebody to play dumb, I'm here. Yeah. I can do it. Handoff to DeBinion. It looks like they're on the four-minute drive right yeah. now. So, Cole obviously has run the ball, stay in bounds, get first downs, and force the defense to continue to bleed their timeouts. Looks like Tykees Crawford, 53 in white. A little banged up on that last play. They're counting on him. Started a couple games last year at right tackle. Came in, transferred a couple years ago from Charlotte. Came out of high school as a four-star. Good sign, he'll stay in the game. I see with the quarterback kneeling, offense won that four minute drill. Coach Pittman didn't like whatever the defense was doing. He barked at those guys and now he's standing on that side of the field. He's been behind the offense most of the game. Or scrimmage. Whatever you want to call it. You can call it a game. I know you're just you're very anti. There's no gamer. clock and there's no score. So a game to me, there's a winner and a loser. We can that, that just that's up to us and the fans. We the, determine who the winner and loser yeah, is. Okay. You're a winner. I know that. You you're yeah. a winner. <laughs> I'll start naming some winners off. There's been some impressive performances we've yeah. seen from this game. This afternoon, scrimmage, practice. <laughs> right. It's all about practice. Right. It's all about practice. I mean, you, you're probably, you, are you in the camp of you, you want to play another team? Sam Pittman just grabbed the microphone and said, I want one-on-one, -on -one, two-minute drill. Let's line it up. Uh oh, here we go. Thirty-three seconds, one timeout. Thirty-three seconds, one timeout. Do you need a field goal or do we need a touchdown, Coach Pittman? Thirty-three seconds. Offense got one timeout. Need a field goal. Need a field goal. Here we go. I mean, the way they're kicking the ball today, they just got to get to about the 35-yard line, if that, maybe in the 40. So K.J. Jefferson back on the field with his first team offense against the first team defense. And here we go, 33 seconds, one timeout, need a field goal. And then, you know what, you know what we're going to have here? This is the game. This is, how you, this, is, this is how you determine a winner and a loser right here. There you go. He heard me. It's officially a right. game now. Yeah, right. It's on. K.J.'s live. No, I'm kidding, fans. He, K.J.'s not live. Here comes some pressure on a first down. Nobody there. He throws it out of bounds. That's a penalty. That is the definition of an intentional ground. But they've done yeah. a great job with this. This man. There it is. Yep. Man to man coverage. There is the flag. Man to man coverage, and they're bringing the mic and then looping a defensive end around, and the offense line's just not passing it off in time. And it's the second time we've seen a sack on it. Let's see. Was there anybody in the area? There's the loop right there. But Sam Pittman was pointing out that there was somebody back there. But guess what, Coach? There wasn't anybody no, no. within 20 yards of that football. We need to yell down to Coach Pittman. He's got the headsets down there. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll give him the official replay. So they called it grounding. They're going to back him up to the 
to the 43-yard line. And there's 28 seconds on the clock. And now it'll be second down. And about 20. Uh-oh. Oh, 18 seconds on the clock. I don't know about oh, that. Oh, they had 10-second runoff. Oh. Can't burn the house if I have one timeout. Don't want to waste a timeout. What? I don't know. I didn't know you can get a, a, that penalty on an intentional grounding. I mean, come on, baby. Stevens, that was an absolute beautiful dime of a ball there from KJ. Got to reel that in there, put it in a spot for his guy to catch it. Always well, looking at KJ, the timing, the rhythm. Good job. A little step back, buy himself some time. I don't know. Snacks, snacks, snacks might have gotten his little hand in there and got his hand in the cookie jar for a little snack to knock that thing away. Now eight seconds. It's third down. KJ steps up. Nobody's open, and he'll be touched around the 45-yard line. They'll take a timeout with one second. Well, before we get out of here, I just this is going to be one of the one of the great nickname teams in 2023. So we wanted to get you set. Snacks is one of those nicknames, but look at some of these nicknames. Trajan Jeff go to transferred in from Missouri. Call him Tree. How about Rocket? We've known him for a little bit. Now, I don't know about Nudie. I'm not sure the story there. Yeah, some off the field preferences that, you know, we don't want to get into. But you got Day Day, Fortnite, you got Pooh, Bubba, Tang. I mean, just some good ones. I love snacks, though. Yeah. He, got, he was bringing snacks into the meeting back at Baylor and uh, just got dubbed that his freshman year. No snacks in meetings. You can have some sunflower seeds. You can have some sunflower seeds. Uh, but but no, you can't be eating in the meeting. Distracting, there's crumbs on the ground. Save the eating for the lunchroom. Yeah. I think that's going to wrap it up with our nicknames. We'll take a break, come back, put a wrap on it. Uh, even had the classic cars out in the parking lot. Part of, part of the festivities here at the 2023 Arkansas red-white game on a Woo Pig weekend as we've wrapped up the spring game and got to see KJ Jefferson, Rocket Sanders, and what this might look like in the fall with new coordinators on both sides of the football. And this is where it all starts September 2nd against Western Carolina, a week later, Kent State. Then it's BYU, and then really the the season unfolds in a hurry at LSU, A&M, Ole Miss, Alabama, and it'll be a while before they get back to Reynolds Razorback Stadium once they take off for Baton Rouge on Sept September 23rd. They won't be back until October 21st for a true home game. But Aaron Murray, your thoughts about today? Um, obviously, new look team, both yeah. sides of the ball. What'd you make of it? I thought it was great. I thought it was really good. I thought the offense was extremely impressive for only you know, being here for 15 practices to, to be able to execute the way they did today. I thought that's a huge win for Coach Enos, Enos and, and, and that, that you know, the quarterbacks, the receivers look good, get the tight ends involved. Uh, and then defensively, brand new look too, that four down. And, and you saw the speed of the defensive line, those defensive ends coming off the edge, the looping. I thought the defensive end, or the DBs played well too. So I think overall, you walk away from this as a fan, as a coaching staff, as a player saying that was a win. I've seen a, some, some sloppy spring games. This one was extremely well organized with some great plays on both sides. Well, now it's time to look at some film, maybe hit the transfer portal, pick up a couple extra guys, and lock in for August when these players and coaches will return to campus for real and get ready for the 2023 season and try to improve on that 7-6 and six record from a year ago. So for Aaron Murray and the rest of our crew, hope you've enjoyed this, a sneak peek of Arkansas football of 2023. We're all winners today, even though there was no score on the board. Aaron, <laughs> you really won today. You won too, my friend. So for Aaron Murray, I'm Dave Neal. Thanks so long, everybody.
Can't wait till football season gets here. It'll be here before we know it.